Hi everyone! In today's video we're going to cover two component regulatory systems in bacteria and we're going to draw out how these work. Basically, two component regulatory systems are the ways in which bacteria respond to an external stimuli and change their pattern of gene expression based on what's happening in the extracellular environment. Let's begin by looking at the parts of our two component regulatory system and like its name suggests, there are only going to be two of them. The first one I've drawn down here in green, and that's called the sensor kinase, and it can also be referred to as a histidine kinase. As you can see, a part of it is in the extracellular environment, where it's going to receive messages from the extracellular space, and it's going to transfer that signal into the intracellular environment by the means of phosphorylation. Recall that kinases are enzymes that transfer phosphates. That's their job. So our sensor kinase senses something and then sends a signal in the form of phosphorylation. And the thing it's going to wind up phosphorylating is the second part of our two component system, which I've drawn down here in blue. And this is what we call the response regulator. This intracellular protein receives the signal from the sensor kinase in the form of phosphorylation and can then bind to DNA to alter the gene expression based on the signal from the external environment. So it binds the DNA and it changes the pattern of gene expression. So that's it. That's our two parts of the two component regulatory system. Now let's put them together and see how they work. All right, so here we have our sensor kinases, and here we have our response regulator. So notice that to begin, when there's no stimuli, our sensor kinases are separate. However, when an external stimuli is present, these sensor kinases will dimerize and come together in close proximity like this. And now they'll be bound by whatever the substrate is that they recognize. Once these have dimerized and come into close proximity, these tails in the intracellular space are going to undergo what's called autophosphorylation. That means they're going to add a phosphate to themselves. And it does this by taking an ATP molecule, stripping off a phosphate, and converting it to an ADP. So when ATP is used, it becomes an ADP, and now our tail has a phosphate group added, and this occurs on each side of our dimerized sensor kinase. So now our sensor kinase has the phosphate groups attached to it, and it needs to transfer those phosphates to our response regulator, which is right here floating around as a blue square. So our response regulator is gonna make its way up to the sensor kinase, and the transfer of that phosphate group is going to happen. So this phosphate group is going to get added to And when this happens, a common theme we've seen so far, our response regulator is undergoing a conformational change to go from its inactive form to its active form. We now have our active response regulator that's going to affect change at the level of DNA. So let's draw some DNA in our little diagram. Our active response regulator is now essentially a transcription factor that can come bind to our DNA and facilitate the transcription of genes involved in responding to the external stimuli. And that's it. One more time, our sensor kinases hanging out here in the cell until whatever substrate they bind is present, at which point those kinases dimerize and undergo autophosphorylation to put a phosphate group on each tail of the sensor kinase. Those phosphate groups then get transferred to our response regulator. When that happens, the response regulator undergoes a conformational change from its inactive form to its active form and moves down here where it can bind DNA acting as a transcription factor to facilitate the transcription of genes that are needed in response to that external stimuli.
Now this interaction is very, very specific. So there are hundreds of sensor kinases, each of which binds to its own substrate and hundreds of response regulators that can interact with those sensor kinases and change gene expression. So we just looked at how response regulators drive gene expression and turn on gene expression. But what happens when that external stimulus is gone and we no longer need expression of those responsive genes? Well, this is a really clever thing that bacteria have evolved in order to change the response regulator very quickly and very easily from the active form back to the inactive form. I'm going to label these up for us so that we can recall this is our inactive form. It does not have a phosphate bound to it. And up in the circle is our active form. It will have a phosphate bound to it. There's our phosphate. Now we've already discussed that our inactive form becomes active because an ATP is used and converted to an ADP to add the phosphate group to our response regulator and make it active. And this is carried out by a kinase and is the process of phosphorylation. And as you can probably guess, in order to convert it from the active to the inactive form, we're simply going to reverse that process, release our phosphate into the environment where it's now a free phosphate, and turn the sensor kinase back into its inactive state. Now this process of removing a phosphate is called dephosphorylation, and it's carried out by a certain type of enzyme called phosphatases. And while phosphatases can be independent proteins, independent enzymes that do this on their own, our response regulators actually have autophosphatase activity. So they're going to remove that phosphate on their own. So they auto dephosphorylate. In this way, we can keep moving between active and inactive states as the signal is needed. Now this auto dephosphorylation happens on its own. This is the rate limiting step of the whole system, which means that for some signals, it may take a while for them to turn off as we wait for our active form to go back to our inactive form. And when we need that signal to continue, once our response regulator has become inactivated, it can simply be reactivated to keep maintaining expression of those genes as needed to respond to the external stimulus. Okay, time for a super quick recap. We have our sensor kinases that receive and send messages from the external environment. We have our response regulators which get activated in response to those stimuli by phosphorylation and they control their own activity by undergoing auto dephosphorylation to convert back to their inactive form and release that phosphate into the environment. So they regulate their own activity in order to control gene expression.